All right. Welcome everybody back to the podcast, back to the Live02 podcast. My name is Jenna Ochoa and uh, most of you might know that I handle some of the marketing here at Live02. And today we're excited to be sharing a Live02 user testimonial with you. It's coming from a user, Jeff Langley, who is located in Florida, right, Jeff? Key Largo, Florida. Yes. All right. Key Largo. And we're also joined by our VP, Tom Butler. Hey, Tom. Hey, Jenna, Jeff, how's it going? Good, good. Excited to, to hear Jeff's story. I know that he's shared a little bit. Um, for those of you that are members of our private Facebook group, Jeff's pretty active in there and sharing some tips and stuff that he's been working on. So we're excited to get the whole story today. So I guess let's go ahead and just do a brief intro. Tom, if, if you don't mind, I know that a lot of people listening already know who you are, but why don't you give us a brief intro to what you do here at the company? Sure. So I've been with Livo2 for quite a while and wear many hats, but I think one of the most important one is helping us develop, you know, where Livo2 is placed in the tools of enablement for people to help themselves become a participant in their own health. Uh, that takes a lot of roles, but one of the most rewarding things we get to do is meet people like Jeff. Uh, give them a little guidance and set them off on their way. And this is a really cool example of an individual who, <laughs> by circumstance, found out about Livo2 and um, said, "Hey, I want to give this a try." And that's a short, short piece of of what we get into. Yeah, absolutely. So I think Jeff does have a pretty cool story about how he found uh, Livo2. But before we get into that, Jeff, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? If you're comfortable sharing, you know, your age and stuff like that, it might be helpful for other listeners just so that they can compare. Yeah, sure. So um, uh, 54 years old, um, always been active, played sports um, until my health started to deter deteriorate pretty badly about uh, five years ago. Anyway, I have two daughters down here, really good softball players. So, um, you know, it's nice to be able to play catch with them and, and stuff. Um, I write software for a big data company, uh, work from home. So, you know, sit, basically sit all day um, and then definitely try to work out in the morning or in the afternoon. And that was getting more and more difficult with health issues. So um, met, um, I met Mark Squibb in March of 15. and. It, changed my life. Yeah, and for those of you guys who don't know Mark or who Mark Squibb is, he is our CEO and inventor of the product. So Jeff, why don't you tell us about the time that you met Mark? It's actually a pretty cool story. So um, March 2015, my daughters and I were heading to a little island over in the bay in, Key you know, in the Florida Keys. Hard to get to, hard to find. It's really shallow over there. <laughs> but um, anyway, we found it. So we were camping for the night, um, you know, all our stuff in the boat, set up, set up camp, tiny little island, you know, just enough room, maybe a quarter of an acre. Um, so we set up, we're, you know, it's starting, the sun's going down, we, you know, just had our meal, and then uh, we see a kayak come by with a sail, on a sail. A kayak had a sail and had two, two men, you know, sitting in it. So we went over to the dock where they came in, and it was Mark and his son, Dakota. So, you know, nice guys, we welcomed them. They started taking more gear out of a kayak than I've ever seen. <laughs> All yeah. the gear. Yeah, both, both of them were in there. They opened up everything and whatever. So they set up their camp and uh, just talking, you know, nice guys. And uh, so then um, a little later, they were going to fish for their food. So I grabbed my dog and said, yeah, let's go over and fish. So we went to the other end of the island and there's like two, like, holes water holes that had just a ton of fish in it so my daughter and i are just throwing our you know pole in there and you could almost grab them and they weren't biting you know none of them were ignored i'm getting aggravated so i look over about you know 20 yards away i see marks over there in dakota and they're just taking fish out of there you know one after <laughs> and so i look and mark's laying down on the ground leaning over with the pole and Dakota's like hiding behind a tree. Mark would shake, you know, his the rod and then a fish would bite it. He would pull it up, Dakota, and was just, whatever. I didn't know how to do it. So later on, you know, he shared his fish with us. I gave him some of my steak. And I'm, just, I'm like, so how did you do that? What was the difference? 
and he went into the most detailed yet simple explanation of what these fish are <laughs> and how to trick them. You know, he said, you can't stand up like you guys were and talk it loud. Um, you know, you got to lay down, let it, you know, let the bait go down slowly, just like their natural habitat. He said, they see you towering over there, think it's, you know, a predator that's going to get them. So anyway, I'm just was really impressed with that, how he did that so logical, you know. And then we're talking more and more. The, you know, I think the, the kids went to bed or something. We had a little fire and uh, we're just talking about, you know, life, kids, everything. And uh, I just, I mentioned, I, I, just, I can't get healthy. You know, I, every time I get in shape, something happens, I get injured. And he just ca kind of casually mentioned, he goes, yeah, all that stuff's basically caused by inflammation in your body somewhere. And so, and that's literally all he said about <laughs> the oxygen. Um, and the next day when we laughed, they said goodbye. He gave me his card. I just said, yeah, whenever stay in touch. And I just saw it live out too. And when I got home, I started Googling and reading about it. I started reading about EWOT and then the Live O2 product. And I'm like, I might as well give this a shot. Um, because I hate pills. I hate taking pills and treatments and going to the doctors and just get sliced open. So that's what got me hooked, you know, him, the way he caught those fish and then just reading about the Live O2 system. <laughs> So we can add Master Fisherman to his resume. <laughs> yeah, good. Really good. I think I think we need to do more fishing here than uh, <laughs> anything else. <laughs> this is a new strategy we need to test. Yeah. Well, that's good. So I guess before we get into the details, Jeff, about you know how you're saying that you hate pills and all of that, let's go ahead and walk us through. You sent me over a really great timeline, sort of like your health timeline. So why don't you walk us through kind of what was going on at that time, you know, with your body and walk us through that 2015 when you met Mark? Yeah, so in a probably a three year span, I had four surgeries, a uh, herniated disc in my neck, a uh, torn labrum in the shoulder, and uh, the neck just had been hurting for years. And I finally realized, or probably three years, and I realized it was that torn labrum in my shoulder. I tore it playing ping pong which was obviously <laughs> the final straw, yeah. yeah. It was a pretty good spike, but it was playing bing bong. Um, and then I have had plantar's, chronic plantar's fasciitis in both of my heels. So in the course of like three years, I had surgery on all those, and right away, and getting in the, then I started to get another herniated disc under the other one. So it was really, um, really demoralizing, because I'm a guy, I need to work out, and you know, having the will to do it, but physically not being able to do it is just torture, you know? And I don't like taking pills, you know, I know people who are hooked on, and I don't think pills have ever worked for me. I really don't like um, anti-inflammatory. I don't, I don't think that's ever worked. And I always just thought, you know, all right, what is this going to fix? And that's nothing. It's just going to hide those, the symptoms. And I've always been a guy that needs to find, you know, wants the source of, you know, whatever the, the issue is. So, um, yeah, and anyway, I was always, oh, one big thing, my muscles were always tight. They would never lose my neck. I'm always stretching it, you know, from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. And I think, and Tom can maybe chime in, I think I was getting all those injuries that seem like it's tight muscles putting strain on ligaments and joints, you know, herniated disc in the neck, the shoulder. And I think just with Livo too, his, I'm never sore anymore. I'm never sore, never tired. I wake up in the morning, I'm loose. And I think that was, you know, one of the biggest things. So um, used to get, yeah, I used to work out and be sore for two days. Um, uh, joints so in the morning, you know, it'd take me 20 minutes to loosen up, you know, it's just towards walk and hearing things crack. Uh, couldn't sleep through the night. Um, I was coming home, I was in bed by seven, eight o'clock and then, you know, not sleeping well, which, you know, just causes more issues. And I was getting uh, enlarged prostate symptoms, you know, getting up several times to go to the bathroom, the, you know, fall, feeling like you have to go when you don't. So. Health and was, this was, was, sorry, Jeff, this was around like your late 40s or so? Right before I turned 50. Yeah. Right before you turned 50, okay. Yeah. And so then, you know, um, yeah, I went for my 50 the year, the colonoscopy, all that. And um, I've never had, I don't think I've had my cholesterol and blood pressure check a lot, but the doctor said, yeah, they're high, both high. And you got to do something to, you know, change your diet, exercise more, which to be honest, I don't know how I could exercise more. I always exercise. Uh, they said that's got to. He said it's got to come down, or got to go on drugs. And I uh, also had him. He said, "Yeah, we, we had an MRI for my neck, and he said, yeah, it's another. That's another herniated disc. You're gonna have to schedule surgery." So yeah, that was literally right when I turned fifty um, four years ago, three and a half. Yeah. 
Okay, so one thing I would like to ask you now is how did you feel mentally at that moment? Oh yeah, just horrible, just, you know, just frustrated, not really depressed, but just like, this isn't gonna get any better, you know? My biggest nightmare is being on a bunch of drugs to control blood pressure and cholesterol and all that, because, you know, we've all, we all know people that they're basically living on those, and I just, you know, didn't want to be like that and didn't know what to do. It was frustrating, because, uh, you know, you want to work out, you try to work out, and you get on a good roll, and then you get injured, you know, and you're, now you're healing up again, icing, you know, which did never seem to work for me, so. Yeah, it was pretty pretty low point. You know, Jeff, it's it's so interesting to hear this story. Uh, it's it's very common, and what we have to communicate with people a lot is this isn't normal. You know, this isn't the way your body's supposed to function at fifty years old. But the process you went through, um, once you have enough inflammation in your body that the blood flow is not returning to those muscles and joints, they have no other choice than to start getting painful and to start going through degeneration prematurely. And, you know, a lot of people aren't listening to their bodies and they're almost scared to listen to them because the, the body's screaming at you and it doesn't have anything good to say. It feels horrible. So they want a quick answer or solution. And it's, well, it's really that's a simple. Interesting. Yeah, because I know exactly when I'm getting sick. My body, I know very well. I know exactly when I'm getting sick. I know I'm not feeling well. I know when I'm starting mm -hmm. to get injury somewhere. So after my well, first you, couple treatments of the, you know, Livo too, I, I knew something's changed. But yeah, that, you did the right thing and in, in not ignoring it. Some people will go another decade and ignore it. And then the only choice that they're ever given is, uh, you know, a prescription treatment protocol. Yeah, well, I'm, you know, I'm a software developer and I believe in simplicity and efficiency and things that make sense, you know, and that's what reading the technology from, who's the original scientist, the German guy from a long time ago, uh, Ardon? Yeah, reading Dr. Manford von Ardon. Yeah, and then reading his stuff and then Mark's explanations, I'm like, that just makes sense. Your cells aren't getting oxygen, so things close down and you got to fix this stuff at a cellular level, you know, putting ice on the top or, you know, cream on your skin. It's really not doing much. <laughs> it, you know, it's an, it's, our body is really an amazing, it's the best tool we have. That's, that's the best way I can say it. And if we give it what it needs, it'll do amazing things for us. Yeah. And we just have to listen. So just to continue with uh, my 50 year checkup. Mm -hmm. So went to my doctor, he said, yeah, you need to get fixed up. So literally the next week I was camping, met Mark, you know, week after that, I bought the Livo two system, started doing it. And then about three months later, had the follow up um, checkup with my doc, my doctor. And he did the cholesterol checks again. Right. And he walks in the office and literally looked at me on the, in the cholesterol and, said bleep what the bleep have you been doing and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like what has this oxygen been doing to me and he couldn't believe so I guess I remember this document the LDL was 173 and went down to 149 I don't know anything about cholesterol so I guess that's pretty good but he was more excited it seemed over the HDL went you know I guess so that's good if it goes higher so that went from 42 to 45 and he said he'd never seen anybody and he's like what have you been doing I go been doing this oxygen stuff because will you exercise them more? I go, no, I'm actually exercising probably less. I'm just doing this ox and EWAT. And he didn't, I've never met a doctor who knows what that is, you know, EWAT or, you know, oxygen treatments. They know hyperbaric chambers, but none of them know EWAT. So, um, yeah, that was a good follow-up visit. He said, no, no drugs. You're good. And that's a, a significant point where, you know, basically you took your – your cholesterol level from a place where you were probably, you know, a candidate for cholesterol lowering drugs and you took that off the table and owned it. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's a huge um, scenario. My guess is likely you, you reduced enough inflammation and reversed probably some, you know, systemic infections that were just developing that were just causing you know, some wreckage in your, in your body that 
you had to repair and your body does that by creating more cholesterol. Um, so when you're able to repair those, the cholesterol goes down as a result of your physiology, just being much more healthy. Yeah. And I like things that happen, a benefit that I didn't expect. And that was definitely one of the things I didn't expect. And also I literally was working out probably less time, you know, with, you know, doing 20 minutes of the live O2 on a, um, I think I was on a life cycle then, you know, it was probably less, you know, cause you could write it off and while you're exercising more, of course your cholesterol is going to know, but it was really total time and energy was probably less, you know, just the new thing was the oxygen. Yeah. And for some people, for some people, cholesterol can be tricky. Um, but the, the big takeaway here is, you know, a lot of times we have medical perspectives that are treating something that's not actually the issue. You know, we, we label something as the bad guy. Yeah. Well, really, cholesterol is just the mechanism that your body's trying to use to repair. And what's really happening is you got to figure out, okay, why are we falling apart? You know, why does all this repair need to be happening? Um, that's probably a result of poor oxygenation and inflammation and lack of blood flow to parts of your body that needed it to create energy to function. Yeah, so I started April 2015 doing Live O2. And um, by the way, I should make this point. I do it every day. I don't miss. If I am anywhere within 100 miles of my machine, I will do it. <laughs> I'm a big yeah, I saw that you said you, you work out more than anybody who has one of the machines. So Yeah, um, I would be willing to bet over the th last three years, no one's done more sessions or minutes than I have. And because I'm a big believer, you know, if something's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. So, and a little bit of OCD, you know, so, and it works. So, so in April, started doing it in April, 2015. And then, so at next couple months, right away, I noticed, you know, obviously from the doctor, well, I didn't have to go to the doctor yet before this, but I noticed um, my large prostate, prostate symptoms were gone. Uh, the neck pain was gone from the herniated disc. It was gone. The second one that I was getting. Uh, sleeping through, I literally just now, I, I, as soon as I close my eyes, I'm asleep at night, you know, anywhere from nine to 11. It's ready to go. And I wake up every day at five o'clock now or earlier, and I cannot get back to sleep anymore. I can't linger, you know, I just got to get up and have to do something. Um, I noticed that stuff right away. And it's kind of funny because you don't even think about it. I just remember thinking two months in or three months in, I'm like, I don't have heartburn. I get heartburn two, three days a week from, you know, having beer, any alcohol triggers it, spicy foods, but I love those things too much to give up. So I deal with a heartburn, but it was gone. I have heart, you know, I've had a little bit maybe here and there over the last three years, but not much. It's not like the acid up in my throat where you're, you know, it's just torture. So started to notice a bunch of those things in the first six months. Um, and around that time too, Jeff, I noticed that you mentioned you're currently following um, a ketogenic diet, right? Now, were you also doing that when you started noticing your symptoms going away or what additional things were you doing in addition to LIVO2 at that time? Or were you just strictly exercising and you just added LIVO2? The only thing I was doing back then was uh, fish oil. It seemed to help. I guess it bends your blood. That seemed to help some, some things. Um, but no, I'm, uh, I'll, I'll try anything, any of these new, that sounds right. Like a month ago, I started doing the Bulletproof coffee. We'll see how it goes. So mm -hmm. uh, I didn't do the keto about, about a year and a half ago. I said, all right, uh, you know, I'm in decent shape. There's about 10 more pounds I could lose. You know, I definitely lost weight with um, Levo Do. Um, and then, uh, yeah, about a year and a half ago, I said, all right, I need to, you know, lose some more. So I started with the keto stuff, reading about it. But, you know, that didn't make sense to me. You know, eat steak and you know <laughs> it's butter completely raw, butter contrary raw. to what we learned yeah absolutely and, but it worked i took off 20 pounds and i love steak and eggs so you know and butter so um yeah so i started the keto probably about a year and a half ago okay so yeah i've changed my protocol over the years um one thing i did tom could probably chime in on this i used to do uh, the before i work out you know every day i do uh, the levo two I go for a little walk, jog, you know, I'm not a big runner. I hate runner running, but it's funny thing is I can run four miles without stopping now, which I've never in my life been able to do. Um, but anyway, so yeah, my workout, I do the, I used to do the Livo too, do a little jog and then I rotate through four days. I do upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body, core. And then I go for, try to go for a long run. Cause I always wanted to go for a run. I never really could. Cause I literally felt like my body wasn't getting oxygen, you know, 
and everything hurt used to be when I run since I was a kid too running was just a pain but anyway so one of the protocols first things I, I started doing the level two at the end of my workout and I just felt better the next day even more you know, I was fine the next day. I was a little sore sometimes. Like doing lunges always killed me. I would be, I would used to be, I would do lunges and not be able to walk, walk like a cowboy for two days. You know, it was pain. <laughs> now, nothing. I can do lunges, really go at it with Livo too. But I started doing the Livo T treatment at the end of my workout. And that seemed to make me feel better the next day, you know. Yeah, I saw that you yeah. put that in there. I was wondering, Tom, if you could address that. Is there, is that unique to each? person or is is it better to do a live two session after some physical activity or what are your thoughts on that well there there are a lot of applications for live o2 and in this case what you're i think accomplishing really nicely at following a, a room air workout or room air you know it sounds like you're doing some weight training mm -hmm. um is you're fully you're fully recovering your body, and this is the interesting thing. Almost everybody has still kind of the the teenager or the twenty year old mindset where we think about going out and running like we used to. Yeah, and it's hard to break ourselves from that pattern and actually pull back to what would be an aerobic pace for us now in our forties or fifties. You know, wherever we are, we have to do that exercise lower if we're going to do it at an aerobic pace um and that becomes extremely boring you know you're talking about <laughs> yeah. two hours of a really light jog um to get an aerobic benefit and what we do with live o2 in about 15 minutes is we'll get you a nice therapeutic benefit on the aerobic side of your metabolism and that is probably the best and quickest way to recover from whatever exercise you're doing that's beyond your aerobic pace. Um, when we kind of get oxygenated blood flow back into muscles, we're basically washing out the lactic acid, processing it, and our bodies wake up the next morning and we're not sore. And this is one of the reasons why people stop working out altogether is they'll work out, they'll, they'll be on the regiment for two or three weeks, and they wake up one morning, they're completely sore, their joints hurt, and they have no energy. And basically, really all they've done is they've driven themselves deeper into an oxygen deficiency, and they quit their program. You know, we see this all the time where, you know, nobody can get to that three-month mark where you know, their body has changed enough just because it gets too painful and they wear themselves out. So when you're doing that live O2 session after a workout, you're basically taking care of the recovery and you're assuring that your physiology, when you go to bed, it's going to rest a little bit more and it's going to wake up feeling really nice. It's, you know, it's the same thing as when we were young, you know, in our late teens or early 20s. We could almost go do anything we wanted. You know, we didn't know what soreness was. We didn't know what a backache was. You know, some people in their young 20s, you know, they would go out and stay up all night and drink and not even wake up with a hangover. You know, all, <laughs> the of, the, glory days. all of those things. Yeah, <laughs> all of those things. hangovers are... anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, oh, that's you know, better than that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, yeah. it gets into life, lifestyle support. Yeah. But the idea yeah. is that if you can run a clean physiology, you can stack all those benefits up on top of one another. And, you know, you're, you're kind of cheating the aging game, um, which is good. We all have to figure out how to do that for ourselves. Um, but the idea is your body gets this huge benefit from the workout you're doing on room air and you get the physiological benefit and the peace of mind of saying you wake up in the morning and you feel great it, it changes everything you know it's it changes who you are you know and that's an interesting thing that we have to deal with as we get older so yeah i think that's exactly what's happening is it's you know the last thing i do is suck in all that pure oxygen and it's helping heal all the muscles that you're basically working out you're tearing muscles that's all you're doing they need to heal usually takes a couple days while you have to wait and while you're sore, right? 
But I was reading about steroids, and it seemed like that's basically what steroids do, right? They just help your muscle. That's why it's an advantage. It you know, artificially helps your muscles heal quicker so you can work out more is the big thing, right? And it seems like my oxygen, my live do is my steroids helping me heal up quicker. And I could work out literally every day. I would work out. I have to force myself one day a week to take a break. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I mean, steroids is, a, is an interesting thing where you're, you're basically fueling your endocrine system. Um, but, you know, and they work because they ramp up your metabolism and ramp up all the factors that, that create and grow stronger muscles. But that all still takes oxygen. If you're running that high of a metabolism, you're going to require even more oxygen utilization. You know, the, the travesty. Do, yeah. So I should do steroids and oxygen. Then I would do <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, to the protocol. <laughs> uh, so yeah so uh, that was just one of the first protocol change i made i started doing the live out two at the end of my session and helped uh, another thing i started doing i think i got this tip from maybe you or mark because i was you know emailed you guys several times over the years just to talk about stuff but uh oh. started doing the yoga breathing where you breathe in started breathing in deeper and you know holding mm -hmm. it longer breathing through the nose out through the mouth um, started taking mm -hmm. supplements probably a year and a half ago that you guys recommend on the website. Um, arginine, magnesium, mm -hmm. orotate, vitamin C, and vitamin B1. Um, I don't know a lot of that stuff now. I don't know, but I, I don't know how much better, you know, I could clearer minded I can be, so, you know, because I think the oxygen did a lot of that. So any of the incremental stuff, I, it's hard for me to tell if, you know, you guys asked, did that help? You know, like one of the things I did, so the, I did start the keto diet about a half, year and a half ago. And then about eight months ago, I started doing the alternate day fasting just to see, you know, because it sounded logical. You know, that's when we were cavemen. That's basically what we do. You know, we'd eat a big meal one day and then starve for two days and your body just accepts that. But uh, that I liked a lot. The, the alternate day fasting, basically on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'll just have a light lunch, like a soup or something. And I don't know what that does to me, but I, I like it. And I've definitely lost weight, you know, that last layer of, you know. Whatever. I'm looking better at the beach is all I'm going to say. I, I, I dedicate that to the, the, the alternate day fast. It, 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 is, it is springtime, and that, you yeah. know, that is the – And I live uh, in Florida. That, that, Florida Keys, you got it. Yeah. you got some competition out there. Yeah. Uh, the reality is most people don't care what they look like anymore. Um, so, and then the last thing. Now, this I think is really interesting. Um, and Mark got back to me last week. I finally asked him about it. So – I don't know how I got into this, but I saw somebody was doing the uh, inversion therapy, you know, a, a table where you lock your legs in, and then you, you know, you flip it over and you're upside down. So I like, that sounds interesting. I just thought, what would that be while doing oxygen, you know? Um, and one thing, so starting the live out too, it literally, it got rid of my her new herniated disc, which by the way, is all inflammation, right, Tom? That's just, it, your yep. spine is inflamed and stuff's shooting out. So. Anyway, I thought, well, I wonder what they do my spine. So I still, though, you know, I always get sore necks. My entire life I've gotten sore necks. And that was the only thing that every few months I'd get a little bit of a stiff neck, but it wouldn't last. You know, after a few treatments, it would go away. It wasn't bad, but I go, so I was just wondering, what is that? Because when I was going through therapy for the herniated disc, one thing they do is the traction where they just stretch your neck out. And that always felt good, but it was temporary. So I bought yeah. um, uh, an inversion table, which, by the way, only costs about $80. And started doing that after my live out too. Then I was still breathing for about, starting out just five minutes, doing hanging upside while breathing. And my neck and spine have never felt better. I've never had this flexibility. I feel like I'd look behind me, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Golf, swinging the golf club, much more flexible now since I started doing that. I still suck at golf, but I'm not flexible. <laughs> but anyway, that was the last thing I did. Yeah, about two months ago, started the inversion therapy. And how often do you yeah. do that, Jeff? Every day. Don't miss. Six thirty every night. Yeah, yeah. I'm very regimented, as you saw. I got my little it, daily schedule down below, <laughs> which makes me kind of look like a Jeff. When I read it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you brought this up, Jeff, because when uh, basically gravity is never our friend until yeah. we do something like hang our, you know, we flip ourselves upside down. And then all of a sudden, you know, what's happening in our body with these dense joints and sinews and cartilage and even our vascular system, it's considered white tissue, which means it virtually has no blood flow in it. 
and it regenerates very slowly. Now, the way it gets oxygen and nutrients uh, is basically in the, the plasma of our blood. And what we're doing with LIVO2, and Manfred Van Arden talks about this, is we're getting enough oxygen dissolved in the fluids of our body that these white tissues can get satisfied. They can pull oxygen out of the fluid much easier than they can get it from blood circulation. So th those tissues are able to regenerate faster. And this is, you know, A, the oxygen, and B, if you have decent nutrition, your body will have the building blocks to regenerate that. Our bodies are constantly regenerating, and different tissue groups do it faster than others, but joints and cartilage and collagen are some of the slowest. Mm -hmm. But the, the idea here with inversion is you're basically allowing your body, all of these joints, to kind of separate a little bit, and it's almost like you're pulling fluid into it and, and giving it a little bit more space to get surrounded by this nice fluid that you've created with a lot of oxygen in it. And it makes complete sense to me. We I had an experience where I was training one of our trainers and um, I finished up the session with him and I turned around and was going to get some water and I came back and his feet were up on top of the bicycle. And I was like, Oh no, he fell off the bicycle. And then I realized he was just flipping himself upside down. He's like, I just want gravity to send all that blood to my brain. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> completely, you know, completely makes sense. You know, you, some of your body is under auto regulation and it's not going to overflow with blood. But, you know, if you're working on a certain part of the body and you can leverage it in a way that it gets more circulation or you can, gravity can be your friend, it's a perfect way to get, you know, more fluids and more blood into a certain part of the body that, um, that just needs it to perform and function better. Uh, I'm also almost an inch taller. <laughs> That's not a joke. I've always been five ten and a half. I'm almost I'm almost five eleven and a half. Now. I'm going and buying an inversion table today. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, well, yo. But I, by the way, I do it in the morning too. I do the inversion in the morning. So, um, well, just let me tell you. So the typical day now. So remember, as, as I say this about the daily schedule. Yeah, why don't you walk us through your routine, Jeff? And just remember, four years ago, or five, yeah, four or five years ago, I was coming home from work and wanting to go to bed, you know, not sleep and not being able to work out. You know, getting hurt. So yeah, I get up now. I cannot sleep in ever, even weekends anymore. It's just when I wake up, I'm up. You know, when my eyes open up, boom, that's it. And I know now it's no sense in laying there. So five o'clock, I'm up by five every day. Just started doing the Bulletproof coffee, which I think is, I don't know if it's helping anything, but it's delicious. I love it. Um, and then, <laughs> so now that I have all this time, by the way, so about six months into getting up at five, I wrote a book that I've been meaning to write so every day from 5 a.m. to 7.30 or so I wrote a book. Uh, am I allowed to plug the book or no? Yeah, absolutely. So it's called, uh, yeah, it's already it's called Already Gone by, my pen name is Jeremy Lords. Um, it's about a girl who's obsessed with, the girl today who's obsessed with the band, The Eagles. And she's on her way to Winslow, Arizona, because she thinks she's the girl in the flatbed Ford, which some people will know it's from the song. Anyway, she um, ends up in Dallas, Texas, as a police cop, and then a detective. And then I'm not going to say any more about it. But anyway, I've always had this idea for this book, and it's every you know everybody's going to write a book someday, right? Everybody is. You think you are. And it was just like I got all this time and energy. Let's see this. You know, I didn't know anything about it. Started googling it. Boom. Oh. So anyway, yeah, it took about a year, but every day I'm up and wrote for two hours. And so that was finished that about a year and a half ago. So anyway, I've started to doing things I've always wanted to do. And one of the things that scares me more than anything on this planet is singing or trying to play an instrument in front of people. So one of the things I started doing about six months ago was, you know, I Googled, I have a horrible voice for singing. I've never sung out loud. So I just remember Googling can you improve your voice? And I started reading about it and they said, yeah, it's just basically a muscle that goes from the top of your mouth down to your diaphragm and good singers just practice. They practice, they develop that muscle. Anyway, long story. So every day now from 515 to about 630, I do voice training, sit in my car because I don't want to wake, you know, people in my family up. But, and there's all these crazy, you know, counter walling exercises you do to develop your voice. But my voice has changed a ton and 
I'm um, ready to actually start singing lessons literally tonight with someone. So anyway, that's my project now, not writing a book, but um, from 5.15 to 6 30, I do voice training. 6.30 to 7 a.m. I do a hot tub. I'm a big hot tub guy. I get in a hot tub. I stretch. And that's when I do the inversion thing. I do a little about five minutes in the morning of the inversion just because it forces blood to your head. It makes me feel awake. I just, I love it. And I'm getting taller. So anyway, um, oh, another thing. I've had an idea. You know, I'm a technologist. I haven't done websites in a long time, but there's a website I've been meaning to do. Um, so I started doing it, you know, learning the new web technology. So I do that from 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. 8.30 a.m. to 4.30, I can do my real job. Um, and then, you know, at end of the day, maybe eat, sometimes I don't, but uh, 5 to 6.30, that's when I do my workout. And every day I rotate between upper body, lower body, core, and run. And then, so I'll do that for about 45 minutes or so. And then I do the live O2, always do 20 minutes or till the, the uh, bag's empty. And then I do uh, 5 to 10 minutes of the inversion therapy every day. I don't miss that ever. Um, and then 6.30 to 8, uh, as part of the website thing, I'm learning all the new, I'm probably going to do shift careers a little bit. Uh, again, the, the big thing now in my field is cloud technology, so I'm, there's a lot of training. So I've been doing that from about 6.30 to 8. Um, oh, and so as long as, if you're going to sing, you got to be able to play the guitar too. So I start to play guitar, I not do lessons, you can do everything online now, you don't really need to get lessons. But I practice guitar from 8 to 9, getting pretty good, about ready to play my first song. And then nine to 10, I relax and maybe watch a Netflix show or something. And then I'll usually sleep by 10 or 11. Yeah, and I mean, I'll contrast that with four years ago. I have to think back, oh my God, I could barely, you know, have enough energy to, you know, turn on the TV or whatever. I'm not a big TV guy, but so. Sure. And I've been doing that for literally over two years now that, you know, starting with a book and just going down the list of things I've always wanted to do. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, you can see that you obviously fit a lot into your day and it kind of makes me think back to you know Tom's original comment in in the beginning of of the podcast today and kind of being a participant in your own health and it just seems like you know Jeff you've really taken that and and run with it so it's no longer like life is handing you things you're you're kind of structuring out how you want your day to go and and you're doing it so I think that's that's really great yeah, well, like I said, uh, anything that works, I'm all based on results. You know, Tom's technology is interesting, but <laughs> my last question, did it work? And so that's what I basically work on. And none of this, uh, it didn't, none of this would happen without the live out too. It, it wouldn't. I would not have the energy that whatever to do it. Um, sure. I have no well, fatigue now. No, my mind is never foggy like it used to be. Um, you know, and just a ton of energy and desire to do stuff. Sure. Well, and, and to, to kind of wrap up with the document that you, that you sent over, you know, outlining your, your regimen and stuff, you also touched on costs. So if you wouldn't mind, just walk us through your mindset when it comes to, I guess, return on investment when you purchase your system. Mark convinced you with his master fishing skills and you bought it. Um, so since then, what do you think that you've saved in terms of cost of the machine over perhaps what prescriptions you would have been on or kind of walk me through that. Yeah. So I've never been big into the pill. So I was never one of those person that buys and all that stuff, but um, I definitely, be, um, I didn't know much about uh, um, chiropractic, you know, getting, you know, getting a chiropractor, do the adjustment. So I, but that seemed to work, felt better. So I would once a week at least go that, but uh, the deep massages I liked that seemed to help. But now that I think about it, I think that's just stretching your, you know, pumping, getting blood into your muscles. You know, I think that's all that is. So I would, I had to literally, because my muscles were tight all the time. Um, it was almost unbearable. Um, so five years ago, I was going every week to get a massage, deep, which aren't cheap. And I had to do an hour. So, and um, the car works. So it was costing me at least 150 a week in that. And also the time to go do it, you know, leaving work, it was a pain. Um, and icing all the time. So anyway, so. Yeah, and that's the big thing about the limo too. I mean, you see that sticker price and you're like, uh, I'm not going to afford that, you know, but then, so yeah, I literally didn't, and I didn't realize at the time, yeah, I said, I'm going to buy this. I bought it because it sounded good and it sounded logical and I didn't have a choice and, you know, it seemed like it treated the problem, not the symptoms. So that's why well, I rich, rich bought it. Yeah. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head there outside of, you know, the prescription stuff and all of that. But really, we try to encourage people to take a deeper look at what their time is worth. Well, what I see happening is a lot of individuals are saying, 
I want to make an investment in me just because that's where I think I can get the best results. And it's literally hundreds of times less expensive than, you know, spending even a fraction of that time in, in whatever uh, the healthcare system as we know it in the traditional sense. It gets very expensive quickly. And, you know, Jeff, I think where you found us, you were probably about a decade into your body saying, I really don't have the physiology to maintain this frame that I've created in my younger years. And typically people have about another two or three years, or if they're lucky, a decade before they're really in kind of the throes of some serious degenerative disease patterns. And it all stems from inflammation. Um, so it, it really is, in my opinion, just the best, you know, one stitch saves nine scenario of saying, okay, I'm going to spend a little bit of money up front, but the system pays for itself in a month, you know, and if we can highlight Jeff's success story is I think you have probably saved yourself hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical bills. I calculate bills. at least 30,000 in in 150 a week times three years. And then I was going to, uh, I was about to have another surgery at least. And I, I mean, the health, our, this health, our healthcare system is a disaster now. I mean, I don't care what anybody thinks politically, but it's, it's a disaster. It doesn't cover anything. So I was going to have to pay for most of that surgery. Um, so that was, I figured it's at least 30,000 I've saved and not having to go to the chiropractor uh, massage every week. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, what's funny though. So, I tell people about it, my friends, and a lot of them come over and tried my system, right? Well, you know, it's not magic. It's not going to be, you know, they're not going to be where I am now three years later after one. So they're like, oh, it feels different, whatever, no big deal. They're not going to buy it on that, right? Some people say, see me, you know, after I've seen me a while, i say, God, you look great. You know, you're in great shape. What have you been doing? I said, oh, this is level two stuff. And, you know, they're like, oh, okay, and diet. So you diet, basically. Well, not really, you know. It's, um <laughs> You know, they say you lost it. And then there are some people say, oh, you wrote a book. That's cool. Jeff wrote a book. Well, I wrote a book because I had nothing to do from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. for, you know, for a year. Um, so it's, you know what I mean? If, if you can't guarantee it's going to change your life, you know? Yeah, I think you have to be obviously motivated to, to take control of your health. And a lot of times people won't see that until after the fact. But I think what you've really highlighted here, Jeff, is something that we also like to reinforce at the company and is looking at the, the end game. So like the long-term play, if people who are listening right now are in their thirties, forties, fifties, this can be something that you can do to be a preventative measure to save yourself from those classic stories that we hear of aging, aging population that is under a huge financial burden. So I think it's really important that that you've highlighted kind of this more like preventative measure, even though you yourself saw it at your 50 year mark saying like, okay, here's some red flags. But you can start as well. I'm not sure how, how early we recommend starting, but you can start any time. And, and I think that that's a good idea. So guys, we're, we're coming up here on an hour. I don't know if there's anything else that you either of you would like to add before we kind of close out. Um, I just want to thank Jeff for oh, for using our product and owning his health. You know, that's the that is the goal. You know, uh, thank yeah. you for just being enabled. You know, yeah, I. Um, <coughs> sorry, um, I just think back of meeting Mark on that island. Um, how much it changed my life. You know, uh, huh. it's heading down a pretty steep path i think then and uh you know this it's just changed everything for the better so i'm glad i met mark uh, squib three years ago on a little island in the florida keys yeah i think that meeting was was meant to happen and and we really appreciate you sharing your story with us today jeff and and i think it's amazing the the results that you've achieved just through through your own desire to to be healthier. So thank you for sharing with our audience. Um, thanks, Tom, for your time as well. And I guess before we close out, Jeff, do you want to tell us a little bit more about where people can find you, find your book online? Or is it 
Is it out for sale or is it something? Yeah, it's on Amazon. Go to Amazon, type in already gone by Jeremy Lawrence. It's on there. And um, yeah, as soon as I get my um, singing stuff done, I'm going to write two more because I had great sale, good sales, but I'm an unknown. So it didn't really catch on. Um, and my editor said, all right, stop selling that one. Get the other two done. That's what unknown independent publishers do. So I'm going to write the next two, hopefully in the next year. Um, cool. I say, you know, just try stuff. Like, you know, tell people try stuff. And what works, stick with it. And breathe 20 minutes a day breathing. It's not pure oxygen, but breathing pure oxygen has got to be good for you, even if you don't realize what's happening. So, cool. We will also make sure and link up to to that stuff in the show notes or in the, the blog post so you guys can find it. And yeah, you can also connect with Jeff in our private Facebook group. If you guys aren't in it, it's facebook.com slash live 2 for the people or slash groups slash live 2 for the people. I'll link up to it anyway so that you can find it easily. But yeah, thanks guys for your time today. And thank you for listening. And we will see you guys next time. Thank you guys. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jenna.